G'day viewers, I'm here to talk to you about mastering the safety systems in Trainsim World 2 on the Amtrak ACS 64 locomotive. We'll specifically be talking about ATCS, Axis and the Alerter. ATCS stands for Automatic Train Control System and Axis stands for the Advanced Civil Speed Enforcement System. That's a mouthful. Together they form part of PTC, Positive Train Control. We see an ADU, or additional display unit, in the cab to the right of the main screen. This is the display for ATC and AXIS, and it shows us the next signal aspect as an interpretation of what appears line side in the top row. It's not exactly the same, but it's close. The next line shows us the maximum authorised speed, and an indicator if, if it has been set by ATC or AXIS. And we have the time left before a penalty break, approaching a red signal the current system status, which we'll get to shortly, and whether there's any system messages. First thing we have to do is turn the safety systems on. That's done on a control panel behind your chair in the driver's cab. Let's have a look at that in the game now. So first up we get the reverser in and set it to forwards. Set our brakes to passenger and mostly release them. You want them just enough to hold you. We do this so you can open the doors, because setting up the rest of the system takes a bit of time. We can see ATC and AXIS are both cut out, and we can see we have an alarm for the alerter, and that ATC and AXIS are cut out here as well. So turning around, look at the panel behind us, turn on ATC, turn on AXIS, and finally turn on the alerter. Back to our chair. No alarms, they've all cleared. And we can see that ATC and AXIS are both cut in and working. Let's talk about positive train control. Together, ATCS and AXIS provide positive train control. They provide speed information to the driver so that the driver can drive at a speed suitable for the conditions. ATCS and AXIS will cause PTC to enforce this speed limit if the driver fails to acknowledge and obey. Basically, it's a safety improvement to the system that was brought in in the early 2000s and was completed in about 2020. But it's also an improvement in efficiency of the system. Prior to having positive train control, you could only have one train and a signal block. In the city, signal blocks are short, about the length it takes to stop a train. Out in the rural areas and the suburbs, they're often much, much longer, which means the tracks are mostly empty. So to provide more services, you need a way to get more trains into each signal block. That's what AXIS and ATCS together do. Trains may come within sight of each other, but they're running at controlled speeds, so that that's not an issue. In the game, the AXIS transponders are modelled as a yellow panel sitting in between the tracks. This is similar to what they are in reality. They're a passive trackside transponder. They get powered as the train drives over the top of them. AXIS conveys permanent speed limits for sections of tracks such as bridges and curves, and it provides information including its location, distance to the next track sponder, the current civil speed limit for different types of train, and the distance to the next speed restriction, and the restricted limit for the different train types, and the length of that restriction, distance to the home signal, the current grade, the local ATCS address and frequency, which ties the systems together, and power change locations. ATCS is slightly different in that it's a powered active system and it's linked to the signals, and it provides the signal status, the exit track status, so if you're coming out of a siding or a loop, and the start and stop of temporary speed restrictions for both passenger and freight. ATCS is active and transmits new information to the train as it becomes aware of it, e.g. a signal changing from stop to proceed or vice versa. This diagram is from training material from Alstom and it shows a situation where AXIS is being used to protect a curve or a bridge. In this case, you have to come down from 80 mile an hour to 60 and later on you're released to 100. You'll see a curve just below the 80 there that's the speed that you have to reduce in order to actually make it to 60 miles an hour in time, and that's called the suppression speed. And we'll see that in the game, so let's have a look now. So 
So we're running along here at 125 mile an hour. We have to come down into 110. So I've acknowledged that alert, reduced the throttle to idle and started applying brake, waiting to see the suppression. And there it is now. We've come down to the required speed, so I've released the brakes. And now we're coming into the curve that Axis is protecting. Once we get through this curve, Axis will release the speed limit and we'll be able to return to normal line speed. There's our transponders. The other system, ATCS, is connected by radio and connected to the signalling systems. It's protecting the signals and, as we discussed, conveying the train information. It also has a curve that you have to emulate through suppression to make sure that your train will slow down enough or stop in time, otherwise you'll get a penalty break. Let's talk about the other system, the alerter. This one shares an acknowledge button with ATC and Axis, but is otherwise disconnected from them. And it's basically a timer. It starts counting down, and if you don't touch any controls and it reaches zero, it'll beep, and this yellow alerter bar is displayed. If you ignore it, that goes red, it shuts down the traction or blocks it, and starts to apply the brakes. So, Let's have a look at that now in the game. So we're coming into a station here. And the alerter's flashing. Acknowledge the alerter. All done. No more to do. All right, so now we're going to have a look at a penalty in recovery. So if you fail to respond to the alerter in time, you'll end up changing from yellow to red, and it will block traction, and it will apply the brakes. Let's have a look at that now. Deliberately ignoring it. Gone to red, and now the brakes are starting to apply. You can reset this before the train comes to a stop, but we're going to let it stop in this instant. Now we acknowledge, or release the throttle to zero. All right then, well you saw in that one the brakes started to release and we'd be able to drive away. The next demo I'm going to show you is a little bit farcical, but it could be a real situation and it certainly gives a good example of why you need a device like an alerter. It also protects against things like inca incapacitation from a heart attack or sickness. So I've started the train moving with very minimal throttle. And I'm getting off. Bye train. So as you could imagine a situation like this, if the driver fell out or did something silly, you've now got a train that's out of control, heading off down the track and a bunch of passengers blissfully unaware of what's going on until they look out the window. So no one's touching the controls. The alerter countdown will have started by now. Interestingly, if you look in the distance, you can see another train right behind this one. That's Axis bringing the trains up inside of each other. There goes the alerter. and the train is brought safely to a stand. ATCS and Axis can both tell you to go faster. You don't have to acknowledge it and just speed up when you're ready. Let's have a look at that now. So we're departing the station. Currently we're under Axis and it's showing 30 mile an hour.
Shortly around this corner, we'll encounter another transponder. And our speed will change. There we go, up to 60 mile an hour. And we can start speeding up. There's no need to acknowledge the alert. ATCS and Axis also tell you when you have to slow down. In this case, you need to acknowledge it, return your throttle to idle, increase your brake until suppression is shown on the right-hand ADU, and once you get to the required speed, release your brakes. If you fail to do this, ATC will initiate a penalty brake. So we're cruising in the train, 60 mile an hour. You can see a transponder coming up in the track there. And we've now gone to approach medium 45 mile an hour under control of ATC. So acknowledge, throttle to zero, and brake until we see suppression on the right hand ADU. And release once we get to the target speed. You can release a little before the target speed. You need to experiment with that to find out where you won't trigger its responses. When the system wants you to go slower, and you don't do it quickly enough, you'll end up with an overspeed penalty. You can suppress this penalty and take control of your train again. Let's have a look at that in the game now. So driving along at 45 mile an hour. Currently under control of ATC. We've now been reduced to 30 mile an hour, so I've reduced the idle back, acknowledged it, but I'm not braking quick enough to actually satisfy a suppression. We've now gone into ATC penalty overspeed, which is applied to brakes. So now I've acknowledged that and applied the brakes myself to come down to the speed and released, and we take control of our train back. When you get an overspeed alarm, whether it's from ATC or Axis, it will initiate a penalty brake event. You can recover it, but let's see what it looks like. This also happens when you simply drive too fast. So we've gone way over the limit. I've acknowledged it. And now we're getting a penalty over speed. And the system has applied the brakes and it's bringing the train to a stand. Now I've acknowledged it, and the brakes will start to release. The final thing to talk about is distance to penalty. It's basically a countdown timer in seconds to how long you've got before you have to brake so that you don't run through a red signal. This only happens at the terminus stations of Providence and Boston and doesn't seem to happen with the other signals along the line. Let's have a look at it now. So we're arriving into Providence. I'm doing 20 mile an hour coming into the platform, which is probably a little hot. Shortly we'll see a countdown timer appear in the time to penalty row of the ADU on the right hand side, because we've got red signals. There it goes, six, five, four. So you start to break and acknowledge it and get into suppression, and that timer starts going back up again. Finally releasing. All right, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope it's been useful for you. This information came from some publicly available things from Alstom, and of course, have to thank Dovetail Games for the game itself that I've showed you this on. 
Now note this tutorial is for a simulator, and it expresses my understanding from research and experiments, and I'm not trained in this topic, so don't use this information to drive a real train. Seriously, just don't. Feedback of all kinds is welcome. I stream live every Sunday morning, Australian Eastern Standard Time, coming into daylight time in a couple of months. I welcome any and all feedback. Feel free to comment on the video. Constructive criticism is welcome, especially if I've got something wrong. I stream every Sunday morning starting at 8.30am, and I also do ad hoc streams from time to time during the week. Please subscribe, and click notify to avoid missing out. Subscribing helps me by helping me see what content is good, and how it helps the channel grow, or doesn't as the case may be.